Good day my friends and welcome back to the X Explorer for another video. I'm Yankee Oscar 6, Delta X-Ray Echo and in today's video we're going to talk really quick about how can you change the transmit frequency of a transmitter or transceiver that is crystal uh, controlled. So basically you can only transmit on a fixed frequency. Now I covered this subject a little bit in the past while I was playing around with the Pixie CW transceiver. I built a VXO, I built a VFO and I did a little bit of experimentation but not all methods work for any kind of circuit. So depending on the circuit of your transmitter or your transceiver you might be able to use one of um, these methods that I'm going to talk about today. Now of course the subject were also covered a lot by Peter Parker, VK3 Yankee Echo, by Miguel, Papa Yankee 2, Oscar Hotel Hotel and I think if you do a little bit of research online you might be able to find a lot more information than what I'm going to talk about in this video today. But I'm going to give you an idea about where you could start. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, I'm not going to waste any time. We're going to jump straight here on the table. I'll show you a couple of things. And after that, we can do a little bit of testing to see what results we might get. But of course, now without saying thank you to my friends at PCBWay for always sponsoring and supporting the DX Explorer channel. They have great PCB prototyping services, PCB assembly, SMD stencils, CNC, 3D printing and a lot more services available for you. Don't forget about the module store, they have great stuff over there that you can order and I will always recommend you to order that stuff uh, that you might need from the, from the module store together with your PCB boards so you get everything in one package. Also all the projects that I'm presenting or most of them that I'm presenting here on the YouTube channel they might have PCB board designs which I'm posting over there under my profile and you also have a link to that down in the video description. Feel free to order any of the PCB boards. You can either order simply the PCB boards or the assembled version if you don't feel like uh, heating up that soldering iron. Now of course if you don't have an account for PCB Way, you'll also find the link in the video description that you can register for a new account and you'll get a discount on your first order. As I'm always saying, PCB Way is the way. So you probably already know that I really like simple transmitters and transceivers and in the today's example I'm going to start with the 10 minutes transmitter which is probably one of my favorites so far. And um, yeah this one it's also uh, uh, crystal controlled and so basically it transmits on a fixed frequency. But I like it because it sounds really really nice it has a nice tone and uh, it doesn't have a uh, chirp and uh, that's the reason why I like it so much and it's very very easy, easy to build uh, without any complications. And the power output on the 80 meters band right now it's about 1 watt without any modifications. So on the right side we have the 10 minutes transmitter. Uh, the CW transmitter. On the left side we have the minimalist CW transmitter. They are both very simple. They have similar schematics but they are somehow different. This one is much powerful. This one we're actually forcing the transistor in order to get the best uh, performance and power output out of it. But of course uh, by forcing the transistor uh, we're kind of uh, getting close to, to get uh, the transmitter to become very chirpy. So for example, uh, the method that we might use for this uh, 10 minutes transmitter might not work just as well on the uh, simple minimalist transmitter. So what I recommend is to actually do a couple of tests before you decide on the, what's the final solution that you will use and see how much and how far you can push the transmitter until it starts to go crazy and uh, you will have to back up a little bit and um, pick the best solution that it's uh, that works for you. So of course the simplest the simplest method to um, change the frequency of the crystal is to put it in series with a variable capacitor. But first let's get on the paper see what solutions we might have available and after that we'll get on the breadboard and we start doing some testing to see which method works best for the 10 minutes transmitter over here. Alright, so here we have a, a simple representation of what we're going to do right now. So this is the simple crystal as it was in the 10 minutes transmitter uh, in the original schematic. If we want to be able to change the frequency of the crystal for a little bit, you know, to, to have a little swing, 
uh, what we're going to do we'll just add an extra variable capacitor in series with the crystal and this will allow us to change the frequency for a little bit now if we want to increase that range we will also add an inductor uh, together with a capacitor and this inductor let's say for example right now it's somewhere around 22 micro henbris but um, the best recommendations are that you will put uh, more inductors in series more smaller value in the inductor in series until you get a larger value so for example we might use um, a three point uh, sorry um, 5.6 uh, micro henry with a 10 micro henry and another 10 micro henry inductor or so on you know you can you can um, play around as much as you want uh, with these values and with as many as um, inductors as you want until you get the result uh, you would like to have now if you want to increase that range even more you can uh, still respect the same rules as you did over here but you will place more crystals in parallel and then the rest of the uh, circuit will be in series with the crystals and in here you can put one two three four crystals you know you can try um, anything you'd like so let's test all this actually on the breadboard together with the 10 minutes transmitter and let's see how far we can push it until it's going to start acting crazy and we'll know okay this is too much let's uh, let's uh, you know uh, get back a little bit and um, uh, figure out which which of these versions work uh, better so we can get as much frequency shift as possible um, you know to to be able to cover as much as possible from the cw portion of the um, 80 meters band by the way before we actually start to do all these experiments i'd like to say that um, meanwhile i actually updated the pcb board design for the 10 minutes transmitter and right now I'm actually preparing to update it one more time to do the final update for uh, 2025. Um, and since this one is really simple and very nice to build, let me know if you'd like me to somehow uh, make you space for so, so you'll be able to use either one, two or three uh, crystals on the board and also a couple of spaces for some inductors uh, and some connectors for the um, external variable capacitor in case you want to use this VXO thing on that board and uh, I will update the, the PCB board design this way and if you still want to use it just with one crystal on fixed frequency we, you can just uh, use one crystal and then place a couple of jumper wires uh, here and there and uh, you don't have to use anything else like the external variable capacitor and the inductors so let me know in the comments down below if you want me to update the pcb board this way and uh, i'll do that for you when i'll get to to the uh, 10 minutes transmitter so here i created a simple um, <laughs> setup just to uh, test uh, these ideas now don't do what i did because it's totally wrong uh, the breadboard it's it's not good for this kind of stuff also uh, the connections to the um, breadboard are too long try to keep the connections to the um, crystals and the variable capacitor as short as possible for the best performance but just for testing purposes and experimenting i think this should do so right now we have one crystal just as it was in the original schematic but we also added the variable capacitor in series with the crystal so right now we no longer have a fixed frequency let's see what's the where we are what's the lowest uh, frequency that we can transmit on so this is 3.57880 megahertz now let's take the capacitor to the minimum capacitance and we'll have to go a little bit higher in frequency with a transceiver to see the maximum frequency that we can transmit on and right now we are on 3.58090 but as you can tell we have a little bit of chip so what i'm going to do to fix that issue i will take this 10 uh, picofarads 
fixed capacitor and put it in parallel with the variable capacitor in order to increase the minimum capacitance of the variable capacitor. You can also play around in the back. Remember, you have those little trimmers that you can adjust. I don't want to take it out right now, so I'm just going to use this one instead. So let's see again the maximum frequency. So right now we are on 3.57990. Now, obviously, I think the lowest frequency should go a little bit lower, I think. No, that one stays the same. Okay, so this uh, is what we can cover with just one crystal and, um, and the variable capacitor. Now, uh, what I'm going to do, and not to waste your time, I'm going to put all three crystals on the on the board and I will also put some inductors in order to test the last version where we have crystals in parallel and also inductors in series to see what frequency we can cover. Alright, so I'm going to add the last <coughs> uh, crystal and let's test it out right now to see what's the lowest frequency that we can transmit on. We went down in frequency quite a bit. Right now we are on 3.577 uh, megahertz. Let's see what's the highest frequency that we can transmit on. Right now we are on 3.5 eight zero six zero not bad so right now we can cover way more now the thing is that these crystals that I have let me see if I can show you it doesn't stay right here I don't know if you can see very well this is three point 3.579545 so they're way too high uh, on the 80 meters band they're actually higher than the digital portion of the of the 80 meters band so for me it would be a lot better if i had some crystals that will allow me to go down on the cw portion of the band so that means i have to have a little bit of a lower frequency crystals but this is what i have uh, this is what I use uh, strictly for testing purposes basically so um, yeah this is the little experiment that we made today so today I'm going to stop here with the experiment uh, this is the simple VXO or super VXO the way some people like to call it when you start using a bunch of other um, crystals and a bunch of uh, inductors in series and um, I think you already got the idea on how you can experiment a little bit and get a little bit more uh, frequency swing from your crystals. So you'll be able to cover a lot more of that portion of the band that you would like to. Of course, depending on the crystals that you have and the value of the inductors and how many inductors you put in series. Now, of course, don't exaggerate as, as soon as you see a power drop in the output or power of the transmitter or the transceiver or as soon as you notice uh, any little bit of chip then that means you, it's probably too much and you'll have to uh, go back a little bit and uh, you know uh, moderate whatever you did over there in order to get the uh, best results uh, possible now, of course you can use this um, uh, this circuit uh, simple thing you know like the, the, the crystals in parallel and the inductors in series with very simple transmitters like the Temenis transmitter, the Michigan Mighty Might, the minimalist CW transceiver, but with that one because it's very simple and we're kind of forcing the transistor already, you'll have to be careful so you don't have any chirp, but it works. You can even use it with the Pixie CW transceiver, feel free to experiment. Now of course for the Pixie CW transceiver we might have a different solution and that is to use either an external um, oscillator and it can be either a VFO or a VXO 
uh, inspired from this solution that we have over here but we'll build a separate oscillator and it will be external from the board of the Pixie CW transceiver. Now we won't be able to use that VFO or the VXO with the 10 minutes transmitter for example because right now this is the oscillator itself on, on itself this is an oscillator so you cannot connect an oscillator to another oscillator technically I tried that before remember in the uh, older video um, so you cannot replace the crystal on this board with the external uh, VXO or VFO um, to be able to change the frequency of the transmitter because that won't work so you'll have to modify the circuit and transform this uh, oscillator that we have right now in a PA stage basically so that's the issue well I, you, I I wouldn't bother to do that and probably I would just uh, play around with a couple of crystals in parallel and some uh, serious inductors and uh, still I'm, I'm still able to cover quite a bit of frequency this way so yeah I'm going to stop here today I'll be back next week on Monday or Tuesday depending how I have, if I have the free time and we'll post another video where we do the experiments and continue while we started today with the VFO and the, or the VXO I'll figure out which one I'll build um, and we'll use that one with the Pixie CW transceiver to see how much we can cover on the 40 meters band for example so anyway that's it for today I'm going to stop here I hope it's not such a long video and I hope it helps you understand how uh, all these uh, things work and how every uh, little thing influences each other so um, yeah we'll continue with this and um, until then I hope you have an amazing rest of the week and 73 from Yankee Oscar 6 Delta X-ray Echo.